Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. And when we left off, we were still doing the sort of same thing by attacking a bunch of vassals. And technically, that's yeah, that's kind of what happens in Mountain Blade. You know, sometimes you get a kind of point in the game where you just have to do this one thing to get somewhere. You know, you have to get somewhere. And obviously, as I said, that this was going to be slightly an uncut series so not necessarily indicating that i'm not going to be you know cutting away the sort of boring parts i personally feel like fighting vassals at this point in the game is actually really fun but that's just me because obviously you know everyone's different and everyone has a personal preference and things like that and i gotta say the swadians have been rallying rather significantly and I'm pretty, well, I'm pretty impressed actually. I'm pretty impressed with them. As you can see here, there is such a large band of them. They are fighting one vassal from the Serenids and one vassal from the Rodox. And I'm actually thinking that the Rodox might actually win, even though they are outnumbered rather considerably. I was actually going to help them to make it more of an even fight, but I feel like the Rodox are going to win anyway. Shall we just speed up time a little bit and see what happens? Okay, well, there's the Vagius. Oh yeah, there's also been a couple of declarations of war and things like that, and I, I, I think, in part, the Swadians rallying has been due to my campaign AI setting, because usually I don't play with it on a very high level because I hate grinding situations. I really very much hate those because I really don't like doing a siege, taking out, I don't know, 200 of the 300 units out, and then resting, you know, for however long it takes for my party to get back to full strength. And then the garrison is almost full again, which I feel is a little bit, shall we say, unrealistic because when you're right outside you would think that you you know the garrison would be unable to receive reinforcements so there's also there's also that to consider but yeah my campaign ai is on a pretty high level at the moment maximum actually you can see my difficulty settings by the way at the beginning of this series i showed at the very beginning in the first minute or so and we are now oh yes i think we're going to go in we're going to go in and we are going to help the Saranids. Okay, so they actually still outnumber us hilariously enough, even though I have 89 to add to the pot. I'm actually pretty surprised by that, but okay. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. And I think we should be okay because I saw the Rodok vassal. He has so many sharpshooters. I am actually kind of intimidated by that because this guy having so many sharpshooters kind of gives me a bit of a reality check because obviously the sharpshooters are their best crossbowman unit and well suffice it to say if we were to go to war against the Rodox then no doubt we would be dealing with the sharpshooters and they're I think they're probably the most sort of prevalent unit for the Rodox to use and in general they are going to be quite popular in the garrisons and as a result i i just remember native being an absolute well the original series of native being an absolute pain absolute agoni agonizing pain when dealing with the rolox and i actually left the rolox i think until last or until second last or something along those lines that was a huge huge problem there i'm gonna tell my cavalry to charge in now and we're just gonna see what we can do. I don't really want to send in my infantry because I've I've actually spent a little bit of time leveling them up. I actually fought one vassal who I let go and thankfully they leveled up eh, reasonably from that and then I've just fought a couple of forest bandits in the area but yeah the, the, the point is is that I was basically just trying to get ready for when they released us from the mercenary oath which is going to be quite soon I believe. I think it's going to be quite soon. I'm going to tell my infantry to charge in now just because, but I, yeah, I didn't really want to do that because, you know, I mean, these vassals can get their armies back very, very quickly due to their campaign AI being on really, really high. And I didn't really want to lose mine because my army takes a long time to get back. So, you know, you do have to use your, use your allies 
you know, to your advantage because they are, after all, just that. They are AI and as such, you know, they're going to be a lot, well, a lot more able, shall we say, to take out enemies and then just rejuvenate themselves very, very quickly. Can I just kill this guy, please? Ah, oh, the Saranid Knights. Oh, no, Saranid Knights? Swadian Knights. Oh, yeah, I just saw a Saranid Mamluk get killed, so that's why I said Saranid. Fantastic, isn't it? Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I think we actually have this in the bag, but we are just running around like headless chickens for the most part, which is not really very good, is it? Well... I suppose what can you do? I do think, however, that my role should probably be to focus on the enemy crossbowmen, or in general the ranged units of the opponent. Because in these field battles, I'm absolutely awful with killing enemy cavalry. And, wow, that guy almost had my number right there. He really did. Did you see that? He almost had my number. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell everyone to come back here. The cavalry, the infantry, everyone to come back here. Ferentis is getting a couple of kills, but I don't really want him to die for nothing. So let's just get him back here. See if we can consolidate ourselves just a little bit. And then I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in once again once we have... There we go, there we go. That's a little bit better, that's a little bit better. So now we can get another charge. Do you know what I mean? Another charge in there. Because getting another charge in certainly is going to make a big difference to the amount of effective damage we're able to do. Because obviously the Mamluks, you know, they're going to be really good when they're charging in. And hopefully some of them have lances and, you know, they're wanting to use them and things like that. But as you can see, we're knocking a huge amount of people unconscious. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have amazing amounts of unconsciousness just going on as as the series progresses. I actually really like this hammer. Thank you very much for suggesting it, by the way. Anyway, point is, we are good. There we are. Very nice. We only lost five, but of those five, we lost four Saranid Mamluks, and four Saranid Mamluks is obviously quite painful, I guess you could say. It's quite painful, but anyway, as you can see here, we do have, well, a number of allied casualties, but that's okay because we eliminated 137 total, and now we have 75 enemies remaining. Obviously, as is the case with native, you are going to have these battles where it is split up, you know, that you're not going to have very large amounts of reinforcement waves or anything like that, and I actually quite like that. I like that formula quite a bit, because if you have too many reinforcement waves, you're just going to have one of those grinding situations that I was talking about. I don't really like that too much, although it really depends. I feel like Native may have too few reinforcement waves, but I feel like other mods maybe overdo it a little bit, because I don't want to see, you know, 50 reinforcement waves if I'm fighting, you know, an army of a thousand or something like that. I don't really want to see that many but I don't really want to see too little, like, for example, two or three. I think a good level of reinforcement wave is probably about ten, because it doesn't, you know, draw itself out too much, and at the same time, it gives you, you know, just enough of the enemy's forces to sort of get an idea of what they're all about, and obviously to make sure that you eliminate as many of them as possible, and take them prisoner, and, you know, if... If you decide to then leave the fight and, you know, not continue attacking them, then you have, uh, you know, a couple of a couple of prisoners to show for it. So, oh, uh, actually, are you are you going to be able to do it? No, I, th I don't think you are actually able to do that. Because if you leave, then you're, you're going to be unable to take the prisoners, aren't you? Well, it really depends. I think some mods allow you to do that and some, some others don't. Oh, um, no, I'm getting confused now, obviously, because... There's just been so many mods that I've played. Ah, oh. oh, there we go. Ah, oh, well, never mind. Yeah, so as I was saying, if you actually are interested in anything other than native, then you can navigate to my main channel page, and that will have basically every single Mountain Blade series that I've ever done under a special sort of sub subset sub subtitle? Ah, I don't know what it's called, but basically just a little section there that has all of the Mountain Blade content 
on my channel and you can see all the special features you can see all the different series and they're all conveniently there you know all the playlists are conveniently there so you can check those out if native is not for you anyway we have now completed our task and ah there we go we, we improved our relation with this fellow I'd like to get honor actually I'd like to get honor for helping these people I mean I don't know why we don't <gasps> King Harlows. Oh, yes. Okay, so we are literally going to be taking him prisoner. I don't care about the honor right now. Taking him prisoner is 100% the right decision. And everyone else managed to escape. I'm actually really surprised and kind of saddened by that. I don't know how they were able to all escape, with the exception of King Harlows. Because I would have liked to have, you know, released a couple more, because that would obviously give us a pretty decent amount of honor. Oh, well, never mind. All right, so we're going to be taking these things here. I'm actually thinking I'm going to take this horse. I'm going to swap it out for the step horse, actually, because this is going to be healed by our wound treatment, and I'm a bit worried about our current horse being killed, because in a previous fight, I actually did have my horse be killed, so I don't really want it to die, you know? Because if it dies while we are creating our own faction, then we are going to be in a really, really bad spot. Anyway, as you can see here, Barney has advanced in level. I think he... Did he, did he level up in this episode, or did he level up in off-screen time? I'm not entirely sure, but... Anyway. What are we going to be doing? What are we going to be doing? Well, technically, what I could do is... Could improve our strength, could improve our intelligence could just go for some more charisma. I mean, charisma would probably make the most sense, but then you have to think about his combat skills, because obviously his combat skills are going to come in mighty handy for, you know, sieges and things. So, for example, shield. Shield is going to come in mighty handy, and maybe athletics as well, because you, you want to be able to move reasonably fast, don't you? So I think we're probably just going to go for another point in intelligence. Am I... Am I going to do that? Why would I do that, though? That's the thing. What am I working towards? Trainer, I suppose? Trainer and maybe... Well, that, that's it, I guess. Just trainer. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spec into agility. Wow, we are the worst built character right now ever, aren't we? I mean, literally, look at this. I'm at 14 strength. I could, get for, I could go to 15 and then actually get benefit from that. I'm at 10 agility, 10 intelligence, which doesn't give us any benefit. And then 18 charisma is obviously absolutely fine. But yes, the other things are not particularly good. Okay, so we're going to go for shield. And the reason I'm doing agility is because I'd like a little bit more attack speed, and obviously a little bit more, you know, weapon proficiency and things like that. And then I think once we get to 12, am I changing what I'm doing with him all the time? I think I probably am. But obviously, due to circumstances in real life, I have forgotten what I was planning on doing with him. So that's fantastic. Oh, well, never mind. Let's go for some throwing weapons because we use those all the time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, we do, don't we? Yes, we certainly use those all the time. All right, so there's Suno. Probably not going to be doing that, but yes, I should mention that the declaration of war was the Kurgits. The Kurgits declared war against the Saranids, and I was very, very much thinking that I would want to take Ikumur from the Vagiers, because as far as I'm aware, that has just been taken, you know, within the past, I don't know, two in-game weeks, and they might have a pretty weakened garrison as a result. So it might be an idea. Oh yeah, by the way, I have... Oh yeah, I did do a tournament. I did do a tournament off screen. I did a tournament at Cherise when I was recruiting the various, you know, uh, what is it now? Infantry that I have here. They haven't leveled up into guards yet, obviously, because they're taking their sweet time to do that. But other than that, we did win the tournament, thankfully. It was an absolute pain, so count yourself lucky you didn't see it, because literally they gave me throwing weapons on every single round. And i got to say that I'm just like, oh, absolutely pained every time that happens. Oh, well, never mind. It seems like the Ransom Broker has moved on from Praven. There was actually a Ransom Broker here before I went down to the Serenade territory, but obviously I was kind of counting my lucky stars if, you know, if if he has actually stayed, you know, stayed around. 
Ah, never mind. Okay, well, let's go, let's just go into Axkal then instead. There's another tournament here. We could technically do that if we wanted to, but I really kind of want to try and find a ransom broker. Uh, it, it's kind of annoying how the prisoner management is so little in native and in general. The only mod that I know of that mods, should I say, any mods that I know of that increases your prisoner management due to your party capacity is, I think, hmm, I don't think Pendor does that, does it? I'm not entirely sure, but I know one for certain is Perizno, and that was, that's absolutely fantastic, because I know one of the previous versions of Perizno did have the ability to create a slave trading faction, and it was really, really fun to play with that. I'm not entirely sure if you can do that still, but maybe you can if you're part of the Falcon faction, perhaps? Oh wow, Traveller? Oh, are you serious? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut away here because I don't want to, I don't want to waste your time with searching for prisoners. I mean, ugh, prison sellers, prisoner sellers, or ransom brokers, whatever. And yeah, I think after that, I'm going to wait for some time, still off screen, and we're going to see whether we are released from our oath. Okay, so I think what we're actually going to do is I'm going to take his offer and become a vassal of the Saranids, but just bear in mind that I'm actually not going to be helping them at all. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to wage war if I can against the Vagiers. I'm going to try and cause the Vagiers some problems. I'm going to try to take Ikema from them. And then, because I think Sultan Hakim is probably not going to be giving it to us, I'm going to then break away with Ikema's ownership in our control. And we're going to, well, we're going to create our faction off Ikema. And then, once we break away, hopefully that is going to mean that the Saranids will have slightly less relation with us than is required to, you know, push us below neutral. And then, that's when the real fun starts, because I actually was just very close by to Dirim and the surrounding castles, and I think if you know me, then maybe you'll know what I'm going to do. But anyway, let's see whether I can actually pull this off. I am ready. Yes, let's do this. All right, let's see what I can do. Okay, so a slight change of plans. I'm actually not going for Ikema because Ikema obviously does require me to wage war against the Vagiers, and they may nay, they might not take too kindly to that. So basically, what I'm doing instead is I am attacking the Kurgits, who are of course already at war against the Saranids, and we're gonna try and take Tilbo Castle. Now, Tilbo Castle is very close by to Dirim, and I think. For my plan to work, this is probably going to be our only option in the long run. So let's just see if we can make this work. If we can't make it work, then I'll go back to the drawing board. I'll, you know, tuck my tail between my legs and I will just run away into the night. And then we will return even stronger and so on and so forth. But anyway, we're going to try and see what we can do here. Now, these guys are obviously going to have a huge amount of archers. And I'm actually kind of daunted by that because, well, they're Kurgits. I don't, I don't particularly like Kurgits at the best of times. Oh yeah, by the way, we have a banner now. Yes, we have a banner and it is the Golden Bear. Oh yes, the Golden Bear. I actually find it rather amusing that Jeremus got himself taken out already. Uh, really, Jeremus, come on now. You can do a lot better than that. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure he's just cursing me right now, but anyway, yes, we are absolutely fine here because once we get into range, these guys will have no way they will be able to beat us. As far as I'm aware, that is the case because obviously the Kurgits, they're not particularly good in melee combat. They're very, very good if they can keep you at an arm's length, and, well, this is certainly not an arm's length. This is a pinky finger length, and I think we should be in a really, really easy spot now. But do bear in mind, we have to be. We have to be in an easy spot here, because if we're not, we're going to just die and lose very, very quickly. So, throwing weapons. Throwing weapons. I'm throwing them. 
Yes, I actually hit a couple of people. I really need more throwing weapons, don't I? Yes, I think I actually need more throwing weapons. Alright, so there are a bunch of people being killed so far. Can I open this? Nah, of course. Yeah. Door doesn't open, or the gate doesn't open or anything. But yeah, now we are going to be losing a bunch of units in the process here, but that is to be expected, of course. I'd like to be able to get into range here and maybe do some damage, because it would kind of help us out, wouldn't it, if Barney was actually able to do something. Come on now. Oh no, they're receiving more reinforcements. Bit worried about this, actually. Bit worried about this. How many have we lost so far? We've lost 29. 29, and they've lost about 80, maybe 90. Yeah, about 90. And we need to kill another 70 of them. And they need to kill another 50 of us. Can we do that? That's the question. That is the question I'm asking right now. I don't know. I, I would like to get by here, if possible, because getting by would make things a lot easier. I'd actually be able to deal some damage. Here we go. There's a little bit of damage being dealt. Once I'm able to deal damage, it makes things so much, so much simpler. Oh, no. Serenade guards, serenade infantry, all being killed because, as you can see, they are now sending in their lancers and their, you know, higher tier units. That's very annoying, isn't it, for them to put them at the very end. Oh, well, it's okay. We did get a nice good foothold on the battlements, so I suppose that's fine, but for the most part... Wow, okay, there we go. We did it, but for the most part, that was very painful, and I'm not particularly happy about that, but we did get 14 renown as a result. We lost 6 Mamluks, 6 guards, 4 infantry, and that was it. Okay, that's actually not bad. That is not bad. Okay, okay, we're fine. We are okay. We're good. We're good. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to just obviously take the, you know, rescued prisoners. They actually do have a wide variety of Saranid prisoners, hilariously enough. I'm very happy about that. And we're going to take some Lancers, Veteran Horse Archers, and yeah, there we go. We're all good. Okay, so I am going to be taking the Peasant Women. I'm not going to be taking the Caravan Guards because personally I feel like the Peasant Women become a much better unit overall. And we're going to hopefully benefit from that but who knows maybe maybe it's it's not going to work out too well all right so let us request that be it be awarded to us yes attempt to visit a lady <laughs> let me do that yes let me do that right now yeah probably not all right so beheshta has advanced in level let's level up his strength i guess get him a little bit more in iron flesh i suppose and there we go oh yes we can level up all of these more serenade guards. Okay, so what we need right now is to reimburse... Oh, we need to reinforce our Mamluk. <sighs> our Mamluk forces, that is not very good at all, is it? Okay. So, as you can see, we have eliminated the Kurjit threat from this area. Tilbo Castle is now ours. My plan, if they decide not to give me Tilbo Castle, which is unlikely. I think they probably will give it to me, but if they don't, then I'm going to break away, make my own, make my own faction, go to Durim immediately, take that, because I've actually done some scouting, there's only about 60 units in there, really easy to take, and then I'm going to, if I can, and if I still have the forces, you know, able to do it, I'm going to take Dirtios Castle, we're going to take, we're going to take Sunuz Castle, and then I'll have, well, Quite a few thieves under our control very, very quickly indeed. I'm hopeful that I'll be able to do that in about, I don't know, two in-game days if I'm lucky. But if I'm unlucky, then vassals from the Saranids or vassals from somewhere are going to turn up and make my day very bad. So let's see what happens, shall we? I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.